Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for His grace this morning. And thank you, praise and worship. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Please uh, greet two to three people next to you. Welcome them to church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord again this morning. Uh, praise the Lord. I want to ask about that day to pray. You know, I have different, you know, parents in the house. Uh, just this week, I was with Pastor Simatani, uh, who is my father, and then Pastor Mulukim Kukwani, my dad, and then Reli Seho Botahati. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Let him pray for the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. Because, Heavenly Father, you are Father. You are everything to us. Your servant, Heavenly Father, whom you have, who we have called him, according to your purpose, Heavenly Father, is about to share the word of God with us. Father, we pray for a special anointing upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, specially interpretation of the word with a better revelation from you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Heavenly Father, we pray that you anoint his lips, you reveal everything to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for each and every individual here listening, that Heavenly Father, your Holy Spirit, because Heavenly Father, you said you shall never leave us orphans, you shall leave us with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit stay us in the name of Jesus, that we may have understanding of who you are, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray right now with the power that you have given me. Father, I come against all the evil one. In the name of Jesus, all principalities and powers of darkness in the heavenlies. I destroy them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that exalts itself against the will of God. I bind it in heavenly Father. I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for a word that is going to be ushered to us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as your son will be preaching to us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Reli Seho. I have a special relationship with Reli Seho. Uh, there are a lot of things that I've learned from him. I can count them. There are so many. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, this morning we are continuing under, you know, the series of the mark of salvation. Amen. Uh, we are looking at the theme chosen and set apart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, those who were, he who were here or who were listening last week, uh, you remember we talked about the mark of salvation and we also uh, did mention that you know everyone is marked every person is marked in this world in this house and they, throughout the whole world people are marked uh, some are marked by uh, the mark of god uh, the mark of salvation while some are marked by the enemy uh, with the mark of uh, of doom amen uh, our god is good those who are marked, we did say those who are marked by the mark of God are the people who gave their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, who surrendered their souls to him. And in that, uh, they are marked. Amen. This, you know, we, we have, you know, a confirmation every time when we pray, we feel that we are of God. You know, when you pray, you feel that you are a child of God. Amen. And also, uh, even spirits, they can testify. They do you know, confirm, testify that they see a mark in your forehead. Sometimes they will tell you they see the blood of Jesus. So they just say they see the blood. Sometimes they see they they, they say they see uh, the mark of the cross. This is what is happening spiritually. If you have you have you know spiritual eyes that are open, that God has given you that grace, you are able to see such things in the spiritual world. Amen. So. Uh, God has chosen his people. He did choose us. We never chose God. He chose us. Amen. It is very clear that we rejected God in the garden of Eden as a human beings. We rejected God there. 
So God chose us. His purpose, you know, for choosing humans. Uh, he was doing this uh, so that we can become, you know, uh, I would say a vehicle. A vehicle that will show the world or will show the whole humanity or will, you know, uh, somehow draw or reconcile humans and God. Amen. So, I want us to, to look at the way God started relating with humans in the Old Testament. We'll start there and we'll end in the New Testament. Amen. Uh, God, you know, he chose the nation of Israel. He chose the nation of Israel. I, I believe you remember that Israel is the name that God gave to Jacob, son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. So God chose Abraham from the beginning. We all know that no one, uh, you know, sometimes when we, we, we think about the Israelites, we think about them as people who are from Israel, as a, as a country. But Abraham, initially, he was never born in that land of Israel. He was, they said he came from a different land called Mesopotamia. So God called him. God just called. You know, when God calls you, he doesn't look at the, what you have done. He doesn't look at your degree, your masters, which tribe you are coming from. He just chose. Amen. So he chose the Israelites. He, when he chose Abraham, their father, he just told him, I want you to leave the people, your people, leave your people and go to the land which I will show you. That's a great favor. I care. It's a great favor whereby God says, that, just leave your people and go to the land which I will show you. Situation is a situation whereby you just leave everything and go. You just follow. I will show you. You just follow wherever God says you will go. And since then, God promised him that uh, I shall be the God of your descendants. Your people shall be my people. You'll be a blessing. You remember when you read Genesis chapter 12. This is Genesis chapter 12. You just read it. And then this covenant, you know, passed through his sons, Isaac, and his grandchildren also, uh, uh, Jacob and Esau. Jacob, who was then later, God called him. Israel, after he wrestled with God. You remember that he wrestled with God. I get, uh, he wrestled with God. This is the only man in the Bible who wrestled, who was able to fight and wrestle with God. And after that, God gave him a name, Israel. He changed his name. He said, you are Israel. Just that I don't recall or can't why God. There is a meaning behind that to it, but I'm not there. Amen. But the, the main, uh, you know, the main important thing about choosing Israel, God wanted to use the Israelites. Amen. He wanted to, to use them so that they can become a vehicle through which all mankind can reconnect or can reconcile with God. Amen. He didn't choose them because they had a degree or they are from the tribe of Bakalaka Koketuanteng, Kumkoko Zimbabwe, Kanakai. No, he just chose. I get uh, he just chose uh, when he elected them. So I want to introduce you to the word, the, the Hebrew word, the principal Hebrew word for election, bacha, which basically means to choose or to elect to elect. This word specifically is referred to God's choice over Israel, as I have just said, that they were chosen. So that us, me and you, can you and me, we can see God through them. But when I analyze, when I, because I'm also going to be a scholar, I will have an authority to analyze and come up with my own conclusions. A. I'll be a scholar. So in that level, I'll be able to say, no, I think Israel failed. They failed. It's only that the grace of God that we always saw in the Israelites, we saw the grace of God. But the Israelites, even today, the Israelites, they still don't believe in the Messiah. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one we are gathered here because of his name, they don't. The Jews, they don't believe in him. I don't know if you know that. They don't. Uh, they still believe that, you know, God is going to, God must destroy all the, 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 the nations of the world. They are the only people who are called by God. They failed to, to get the idea of God. Amen. I was listening to a, 
a, a Jewish girl, she was talking about, you know, the relationship between the Arabs and the Israelites. That when, when they are born, every time when a child is born, they grow up knowing that the Arabs are the enemies. But it is not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be, uh, the, we, we, we are here as a Jews. We are here as Jews. God has elected us to, you know, to show his glory to the nations. So Arabs, we must show them the glory of God. Because that's why there is war. Every time there is war in the middle, uh, what do you call it? Yes. That war is because of that hostility between the two nations. But Israel was supposed to show us the way to the Lord. Amen. So by God's grace, you know, God had to, to do something. And he did something. That through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the one which we are marked by his blood. When we talked about the blood in the lintel and the doorpost, we were talking about the typology, the blood of animals. Again. But his blood was shed. That's why he says, I'm sending my son to the world that whosoever believes in him, whosoever must live, must have an everlasting life. Amen. Therefore, uh, God's grace, uh, you know, has to cover everyone. Even us here, we are covered by God's grace. Because that mark of salvation, it is, we are marked because of God's grace. Amen. That's why I say God chose us. When you say chosen and set apart. So Israel was chosen and was supposed to be set apart. To be a holy nation. A, the nation that uh, people will see, people of the world will see. But they failed in that. They started worshipping other gods. They were supposed to be a monotheistic uh, nation whereby they, they, they believe only in one God. But they started introducing a lot of things in their faith. Started into introducing God, the gods of the Amalekites, Moabites, Hittites, Jebusites, all the kites. Amen. And then there was a time when God was tired and he gave them over through their enemies. That's when they were captured by the Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Amen. Up to this day, it's just these days where they, they are still fighting for that freedom. They are still fighting for the freedom. When you go to the book of Daniel, it will teach you that, you know, Nebuchadnezzar captured the, the, the Israelites. They were called Israelites then. Like these days we say Jews, although we still use the word Israelites. He captured them and the Medes and the patients, they came and also captured, took over. Uh, the Greeks also came. This exile took very long because they failed the purpose of God. Amen. But God had a redemption plan that through the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved one day. And we are here. We are marked. Amen. Now, God did not just mark us. He did not just mark us with the mark of salvation that this one is my son or this one is my, my child. We are marked. Uh, first, God loved us. Then he chose us. Then he assigned us. We are God's servant. When we read, uh, but you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen. I want you to mark where it says, but you, Israel, are my son. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. You, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its furthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. You have and have not cast you away. Amen. So, in other words, when God chose people, when God chooses us, I said first he loved us, I get it. and then secondly, he did what? He chose us. And then he did, it did not end there. He then assigned us to become his servants. Amen. To become his servants. Okay. Chapter 41. Yes, that, that is the one. Amen. So, we are his servants. Right now, as we exist in this world, that mark which is in our forehead, it has to speak to the people. It has to give people life. It has to give people courage. People should, we should now, since God used the Israelites as an example, when it comes to the whole nation, that all nations will come to the Lord, we are supposed to be, to, to be on that line, yeah, the Israel, to take that duty to show all the nations that God exists to reunite all humans 
with God. Amen. So God loves every person, including Muslims. God loves everyone. God loves everyone. God does not choose. So the little girl who was talking about that when they grow up, they are told that, you know, Arabs are the enemies. And then uh, she testified that she later realized that, okay, uh, the Jews, they decided to take God as theirs. And it's, it's their God. That is why in the New Testament, during the time of Paul, there was a group which was called Judaizers. They were saying, for you to become a Jew, you must first be circumcised. So that's why Paul said, no, no one should be circumcised. We are circumcised in the heart. When your heart is with the Lord, that's when you are circumcised. So she, 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 she realized that the, in the Jewish community, you do not read Isaiah 53, the one that I read last week. You don't read it. They say it's a forbidden chapter. Imagine God is giving you the mandate to go and preach the world and you start to distort the message. They say it's a forbidden chapter. They are not allowed to read Isaiah 53, especially where it says uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. And that is the whole purpose that the Lord Jesus Christ came for. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement which was put upon him was to give us peace, and by his stripes we are healed. This is a practical scripture which all Christians live by. Amen. So they said, she said, they are not allowed to read that, that chapter. It's called the forbidden chapter. But it's the law of Moses. They still follow the law of Moses. But when it comes to Isaiah 53, they say, no, it's a forbidden. Which means we are not, they don't want people to hear about Christ. It's a serious war, isn't it? It's a serious war. When you go there, or if you can research going to the Israelites and find out how they know what they believe concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah. Uh, you will see that hey, they, they, you, 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 you even regret why you did ask them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the enemy has hardened them. They've been hardened. I believe also God had allowed, because God has allowed their minds to be hardened. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ came, went to come to fetch or to take his church during the, the rapture, you know, but they will continue to be waiting for the Lord. Even if the miracle of people being raptured they are hardened in such a way that even after rapture, they will still believe that they are still waiting for, for the Messiah. They don't believe in the low life Messiah who was born in the house of a carpenter. Who was, uh, they, they, they don't believe in that one. Even during the time when Jesus Christ came, some did not even believe or this man, uh, he came to rescue us. But then they had expected someone who's coming to rescue them with war, who will fight other nations, especially to deliver them from the bondage of the Romans. Amen. They believed that uh, he, he, he'll be a Messiah who will carry a sword to fight for them. And then later on, they realized, ah, this Messiah is kind of useless or sort of like Judas even decided to sell him. Amen. You see, that's why, that's how I will write my thesis. That's how I will conclude my thesis. I think they failed. But it's because the, God, the grace of God, which is, you know, still here right now through his son, that we are still here and we are able to see the works of God in them. We, 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 we are convinced because when we read, seeing what the Lord has been doing to the Israelites, protecting them against nations, that's how we saw the grace of God when we read the word of God. Amen. Now, God loves everyone. This mark of salvation is waiting for everyone who says, Lord, I have come. I'm here. Be my Lord. And especially during this time of the COVID, this is the time when we are supposed to, to preach even more. You see, COVID has closed us, eh? has persecuted the church. But the church, when it's persecuted, that's the time when it should multiply, like in the, during the, the, the time of the apostles. Amen. So, about me, you and me, God loved us. The Bible teaches us when you read uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, when it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. The Lord was talking to the, to, to the prophet here. He was talking to the prophet Jeremiah. But the, the word of God was written it's just a formula. This is a formula in which every child of God must understand that this word is talking to him. 
Amen. Right now, the Lord is still saying that, that I have found you. I have known you before you were born, uh, Brother O.T. I have known you before you were born. I have ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. God has long ordained us. When he says, I have ordained you a prophet to the nations, it means uh, we are already servants. I get it. Hey, we are already servants. First, we are loved. We are chosen. We are chosen for purpose. That is why last week I did mention that I wanted to go home. But then I realized when go, after God spoke to me, I reckon I have the mark. I have to, to perform. Amen. So God has known us. Uh, the, the idea of God was that before the men, kind of the, the mankind, the whole men, human race, before they fall, God wanted to have this huge family, which will be a family of God forever. Just like that time in the Garden of Eden. That will be, you know, a family of God, with God forever. And then we rejected him by sinning in the Garden of Eden. Amen. So we, we, we are supposed to be ambassadors. Like our senior pastor once preached a message when we were at the old church, those who were there, when he said, we are God's ambassadors. Hmm? We are God's ambassadors here on earth. We are here to represent God. That mark, it, the mark of salvation in our lives gives us authority. We have huge authority, but we don't understand. We have huge authority that, uh, you know, when, you know, you, you command things in the spiritual realm, uh, you, 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 the, the, amen. When you speak, it's just that uh, our faith is so small. Sometimes we want to see things by our eyes, but we are not like that. We are spiritual beings. Spiritual beings must believe things that are spiritual, even if you have not seen them with your, your eyes. So it shows, that, uh, that, it shows us that our God is the creator of the universe, in that he had created this world, he had cre created the whole universe to give him the glory. And then after uh, human, kind of after mankind failed, rejected him in the in the Garden of Eden, he still wanted, he still, you know, desiring that people can come closer to him. Even today, he's still desiring that people uh, can come closer to him. I don't know, uh, this far from January 2021, have you testified to any person? Have you won at least one, one soul? Those who won at least five souls? At least one, yeah. Amen. You see that this mark of salvation in us, we are not doing the purpose which we are supposed to serve God to bring, could it be a vehicle which will reunite mankind with God. We are supposed to do that. So our God, it shows when we read, we read this verse of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 5, we learn that our God is the creator of the universe. Everything belongs to him. The Arabs belong to God. The Sangomas belong to God. Thieves, those who, who, who come and break into your house, they belong to God. Amen. Just that they have not accepted him. They belong to God. It shows that our God is omniscient God. The God who knows. He knows. Good is the about omniscience. They mean the all signs. God who knows everything. He knew that one day I'll be born and I'll be standing here before the church. And preaching and he ordained me already to be a prophet to the nations but if I had not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ I wouldn't be here I get it which means there are so many people who are there who God is waiting that they accept the Lord Jesus Christ and once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ because you are already covered by God's grace amen which means that you are already covered by God's grace amen we also learn that God controls the universe. He controls the universe. And he is the only true God in the whole universe. You know, there are other gods. There are other gods like we hear that the, 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 the Buddhists, they believe that they have their God who is called Buddha. And their founder is Kene Dalai Lama. The Muslims also, they believe their God in the context of God. But you realize over their God, uh, they also don't believe in the, in the New Testament. But yes, 
uh, they have part which they believe in the Old Testament. But when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, that's where, where war is. Look at the Israelites. They've been, you know, reading the books of the prophets, the Old Testament. But when it comes to Isaiah 53, there is war. No, don't read that book. Don't, don't read there. Amen. So, I wonder if, if have you ever, you know, imagined the, the power of God, how, how big God is. There was a course which I was studying one day, when, uh, the other time when I was at the university, which is called theodicy. Uh, you know, I always encourage the children of God not to do that course. If you do that course, make sure you are a pastor and you are from the Bible school. You've learned God, you are born again, or you are not a pastor, you are a born again child of God who understands the, the plans of God. Because it has changed many Christians at the university. That's why they said, Go you be theology, Go you be, it's, it's satanic, it's philosophy. Uh, the course will, will, you know, will make you think. Nagora was strong because I went to the university when I was from the Bible school. I had already had a foundation of theology. Uh, the, the theodicy, meaning the coexistence of good and evil. And they will make you think, oh, there is no God. What if we are dreaming? Does really God exist? But does really God exist? Let me check. It's dangerous. Hey, we came to a point where we started pinching ourselves if we ever exist in the class. Then we realize, no, this is, this is not good. Amen. So, it's a philosophy. It's a, it's a philosophy course. So, have you ever thought about the existence of a God? Has, where, where will we be if there was no God? When I grew up, when I was young, I used to be curious. Even in class, when I'm a student, I'm a very curious student. If you can go to primary school, JC, and ask my teachers, they will tell you my history. I used to ask my mom, who created us? And she would say, God. And who created God? The big God. Who created the big God? The bigger one created her. She would always say that. And then this thing really, really you know, damaged my, my, my thinking. It really damaged my mind. Who created God? So when you start thinking of those, when you start having those thoughts, you should know that you are a little bit closer to someone who is backsliding. You are, you are a little bit closer to backsliding. <laughs> Amen. Because you can't finish God. Right now, you, you will never know who created God. You will never know where he came from. And when we read the Bible, we have conviction with, in our souls, in our spirits, that God existed before the beginning. And what is the beginning now? And he will still exist even in the end, in other words, he's holding eternity in his hands like this. He doesn't end. Amen. So the Israelites thought that they have everything. They can control. They, 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 you know, but God says, no, I am of all humanities. Amen. Now, you know, uh, during this time of the COVID, like last week I did mention that some People are losing the mark of salvation. Uh, some because of difficulties. Some because of, you know, uh, yeah, let me say the hardship of the world. Especially the, during this time of the COVID. Amen. But those who have, you know, the, who have a revelation about who God is, they are still going strong and stronger. Amen. At least I have the revelation of God. That is why I wanted to ask God to at least take me home. Because I knew there is a home. I knew that we have home. Now, as children of God, uh, I want us to, I want to encourage the church that uh, we need to persevere. Amen. We need to persevere in this time of the COVID where everything is, everything is difficult. Everything is stagnant. You know, we still need to persevere. I've seen people persevering. I've seen, you know, uh, right now we are in Botswana. I've seen many nations which were, you know, were destroyed by corruption, were destroyed by corrupt leadership, but people still exist. They still eat, they still, they send children to school in 
in, in overseas. They still do that. Hey. But, you know, it, it shows what now as the Christians, how can we fail if our God is the omniscient God? We should, you know, persevere. Perseverance means uh, when you strive, even in the times of opposition. Because right now we have the great opposer. The great opposer is the COVID. Amen. Every morning when you wake up, you always think, hey, what if today I get COVID? Every time when you sneeze, is it, is, is, what is this? Every time, every time, whatever happens, we think of COVID. Amen. But we should look, we should look things beyond and see that God Ghana knows all these things and is greater than this. And the fact that we are, you know, God has, has saved us. There is nothing that can destroy us. As children of God, I want to encourage the church. I want to encourage the church to go out there and start preaching the salvation to the people and tell them, no, God is greater than this COVID. Amen. God is greater than this COVID. Uh, Romans 8, verse 31 to 36. Paul, when he was writing to the Romans, says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Can we are God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is he who, who, is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, who, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us, verse 35, who shall separate us uh, from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? There is nothing. Amen. There is nothing. I want you to tell you that even if you get that COVID and you die, COVID will still not separate you from God. Well, it has separated your, you from your flesh, but it will never separate you from God. Amen. Verse 38, he says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, you see, are neither death. I think people should understand now, we shouldn't fear death. There is nothing there. Amen. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither death, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So when I was listening to this young Jewish lady, when she, she started, you know, understanding uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, because she grew up knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ is not the Lord. They are waiting for the Messiah. But when she started re reading, having access to read Isaiah 53, then she realized, oh, oh, God is for everyone. God is for everyone. And the way uh, the Jews should look at the Arabs with the eye of the Lord Jesus Christ, they would understand. Amen. We also need to be determined. We have to have determination. You know, that is to, to wait in God, performing duties of the kingdom of God, which we were called for. We must never get tired because we have a price awaiting us in the end. Yes, those who, you know, who look at the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord, whatever you are going through at this time, at this moment, you are actually uh, being prepared for the glory that is coming. For the glory, I've seen on Facebook, there was a picture, they were showing people drinking alcohol. Then they were writing, they, they wrote, enjoy now and suffer later. And then they show them now suffering in hell. And then they show another picture, suffer now, of a person who was suffering. And then enjoy later. Then they show him now the Lord welcoming them. I learned something in that. That you can suffer now, but you know that there is a prize awaiting. There is prize in every suffering. In child of God, in every suffering there is prize. Whereby you give yourself, you give over. I, I, I also read about the Mar Moravian uh, 
people who sold their lives, who sold their souls for the gospel. But bars all had him. Amen. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That one day we'll be, at, we'll be with the Lord in the throne. We'll be in the Lord. Uh, we'll be with the Lord in the throne. If we continue and we do not lose the mark of salvation, we do not lose the purpose of God which we were called for. And then continue to be faithful. Continue to be faithful even when situations do not allow. Even when situations do not allow. I've, I've heard stories of Christians who go in spa. Uh, an example of a, someone who was going in spa, a spa shop, a spa supermarket to buy a bulb. And then they realized, uh, actually they came with a sample. And then they just go to the shelves, they open and put the sample inside and they come out with a, with a good bulb. And that's a problem. I get it. So let, continue to be faithful even in small things. Even in small things. Hey, small things. Those small foxes, they will lead you to hell. Small things because it grows. Sin grows like that. And right now the enemy is fighting because the end is nearer. He's trying to make sure that he capture everyone. So that people will go to hell. Amen. It says... First Peter 4 verse 7, but the end of things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And lastly, Galatians 6 verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. In conclusion, let us continue to persevere. Children of God, uh, those who are marked, they persevere. Amen. And they have determination. They continue to be faithful even in small things. First Peter 2 verse 9, as I close, says, um, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's rise on our feet. Amen. Uh, I want us to examine our lives this morning. Look at your life right now and try to find out, have you ever, you know, reached the purpose? Or have you ever reached that, you know, uh, I agree we are servant. Have you ever, you know, given to the kingdom of God? Given, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about giving yourself to the kingdom of God. Have you ever done that? I want us to look at our lives and, you know, look at the situation right now. What is happening right now? And what are you saying about your life right now? Are you okay with the Lord? Have you fulfilled the purpose? Oh, it's just dark. Can I, in church, there are some people who are, it, well, they are, it's just dark. It, they're just in darkness. Their minds, they don't know where they fall. They don't even know the purpose. They you know, you just come to church and go home. We come to church and go home. Amen. Some, even if you can do a, just a survey and ask, find out if they are, they are with the Lord. You realize that only few people are with the Lord. And only few people understand and hear what God is saying. But few people, most people, they really don't understand. Amen. Now, maybe you might be here and you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are there, I want you to follow me in this prayer. And I'll ask the church to, you know, help them. Say, so Lord Jesus, I come before you in repentance. You are my Lord, because I surrender everything to you today. Be my personal Lord. Be my Savior. I reject everything that the enemy has been doing and using me. I reject the devil. I reject his kingdom. I'm a child of God today. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Be my guider. 
lead me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for the service. And we pray, Father, that as we go home, may your word continue to speak in our souls, speak in us, encourage us. May we continue to understand and remember who we are in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.